Today I'm going to discuss the core reason why evolution's false. It's false because it could be mathematically proven to be impossible. Whatever evidences are presented, be it philosophical arguments or a fragmented line of fossils, you can forget about any possibility of evolution because it fails all mathematical tests. In order for a theory to be considered scientific, it must be subjected to mathematical challenges. And if a theory cannot pass mathematical tests, it should be immediately discarded. Remember that mathematics is the purest of all science. Hard sciences such as physics and chemistry are ultimately founded on mathematical proofs. However, the theory of evolution is based on philosophical arguments and fails all mathematical tests. It's important to understand that nature is always random. Anyone can immediately determine which one of these stones was intelligently designed. About 300 of these spherical stones were discovered in the forests of Costa Rica a number of years ago. Of course, it's self-evident that these were intelligently created, and why? Why couldn't natural forces have created such a stone? Because a spherical stone has order in that every point on the surface is equidistant from the center. Now, if you could calculate the number of possible random shapes of a stone, a spherical stone would be one of those shapes, but it would be one out of billions and billions of possible shapes. So although you could argue that random forces could create such a stone, you need to consider that the number of possible random shapes far exceeds the number of stones on Earth. So the question remains, can random forces produce order? Could a chimpanzee sitting at a keyboard create a novel? Absolutely impossible. Why? Because if a chimpanzee randomly selected characters on a keyboard, the number of meaningless possible sequences would far exceed the number of possible sequences that would have meaning. So to put it another way, a random process cannot generate a functionally integrated outcome in another system. Now this is a self-evident mathematical fact that everyone understands. If you don't believe this, just look at the math. There are about 10 to the 25th possible 100 letter sentences in English. That's about 1 million times the number of grains of sand on the earth. So if there are that many possible English sentences, do you think a chimpanzee could produce one of them? Not a chance because the number of possible random sequences of 100 letters is around 10 to the 143rd power. So to put it in easily accessible terms, the likelihood of randomly generating one meaningful 100 letter sentence in any of the 6,500 languages on Earth is billions of times less than selecting a specific atom in the known universe. Now an evolutionary biologist might tell you that you can't look at a specific segment of genetic code and then retrospectively calculate the probability that it was created by chance. This is because there are many pathways to functionality. But what's generally ignored is that there are infinitely greater numbers of blind alleys and pathways to randomness. And this is true in all informational systems looked at. Now let's look at probability in terms of flipping a coin. What are the chances of flipping three heads in a row with three consecutive coin tosses? One chance in eight. How about 10 in a row? A little less than one chance in a thousand. How about 100 heads in a row? That probability is around 10 to the 31st power. So to give you an idea of how big that number is, think of all the drops of water in all the oceans on Earth. 71% of the Earth's surface, two and a half miles deep, now, multiply that number by 49,000. That is the number of combinatorial possibilities of 100 consecutive coin tosses. Now, we all intuitively know that 100 heads in a row is very unlikely. But most people don't grasp the magnitude of such an improbability, and I bring this up to emphasize a point. It's possible to achieve three heads in a row, and it's possible to achieve 10 heads in a row with enough tries. But it's not possible to achieve 100 heads in a row by simply adding millions of years. Now, it's commonly believed that changes involving very small numbers of, of nucleotide substitutions can be extrapolated to changes involving larger segments of code by the simple provision of millions of years. 
This is a false extrapolation and forms a foundational argument for evolution. It's false for the same reason that you cannot ever flip a hundred heads in a row, even in billions of years. All proposed evolutionary pathways face astronomical improbabilities, far greater than a hundred consecutive coin tosses by many orders of magnitude. Let's apply this math to biologic systems. Human DNA contains 6.3 billion nucleotides. If you wanted to change just 100 nucleotides of DNA to a specific result, now you're dealing with four possible substitutions for each position. Utilizing the same math, the number of different sequences of just 100 nucleotides is around 10 to the 61, or about the number of elemental particles in the solar system. If you take this to the level of creating a functional protein, that would be analogous to consecutively flipping a 20-sided coin and achieving the same result 400 times in a row. Now maybe you're thinking, wait a minute, no one is saying that mutations had to occur in a specified sequence. Numerous mistakes will be made along the way and natural selection will remove all the incorrect sequences. The problem is natural selection could never have a chance to navigate to an optimal result. When you're dealing with numbers like 10 to the 61, you might as well just say infinity, regardless of how many millions of years or population sizes that you might imagine. In other words, since there are an infinite number of possible mutations, natural selection will never create a specified sequence because the mutations required to make such a change will never occur. Some argue that you can't look at something ex post facto or after the fact and calculate the probability that it randomly occurred. This is a false belief utilized to justify evolution in the face of mathematical impossibilities. Let's consider, for example, the results of several series of 50 consecutive coin tosses. In the first series, the result is random. Now this is a plausible result of 50 random coin tosses. Now let's look at the next four series. These are not random, but each has a pattern. So you can look at the result and say, these were not random coin tosses. Now the last series doesn't show a pattern, but it's not random because 90% of the results are tails. And this is a marked deviation from randomness. Now let's look at the probabilities of all of these non-random results after the fact. Even the probability of achieving 45 tails out of 50 in any order is only about one chance in 474 million. I'm making this point to emphasize that if you examine any proposed evolutionary line of descent in terms of mutations, you can conclude that random mutations could not have created it because those mutations will be constrained to a pattern that preferentially affects certain genes. We've all heard the statement that no two snowflakes are alike, and this is actually true because the number of possible snowflake configurations far exceeds the number of snowflakes that have ever fallen. It's a mathematical certainty that a random process can't produce identical results if the number of possible outcomes is too great. Now this is the identical principle utilized in DNA profiling. Life and death decisions are made based on the probability that a suspect's DNA does or does not match the DNA found at a crime scene. So if a suspect's DNA links him to a crime scene, he can't argue in court that his DNA just happened to match the DNA found at a crime scene. Now the DNA of everyone, which is composed of over 6.3 billion nucleotides, is 99.9% .9 identical. DNA profiling is accomplished by the identification of only about 50 specific nucleotides that are known to vary from one person to the next. It's nevertheless considered mathematically certain that the 50 nucleotides of one person will not coincidentally match the 50 nucleotides of someone else. Why? because a random process that has trillions of possible outcomes cannot result in a specified outcome more than once. So just as no two snowflakes are alike and no two DNA samples in humans are alike, it's impossible for random processes to create identical outcomes as seen in convergence. Specifically, complex protein convergences, which involve hundreds of specific amino acids and three-dimensional shapes, cannot possibly be created through random mutations. So I'd like to point out four mathematical challenges to evolution. The rarity of specific mutations, convergence, the evolution of complex integrated parts, and the nature of coded information. 
It's commonly believed that if you can simply imagine a functional continuum from one mutation to the next, that you've adequately explained a proposed evolutionary pathway. However, it's generally ignored that specific mutations are exceedingly rare. Based on observed biology, the probability of a single nucleotide substitution to occur in one generation and become fixed in the population is about 1 in 5.7 billion births. Now, this fact is largely ignored in many evolutionary proposals. For example, in 1994, Nielsen and Pelger published a paper, and they proposed that the vertebrate eye could have evolved from a light-sensitive spot in a fish in about 300,000 generations. They proposed 1,829 steps of incrementally increasing curvature of the retina and narrowing of the pupil, and they argued that each step would have been functionally superior to the previous and thus could have been created by evolution. But what they ignored is the likelihood of those 1,829 mutations to have randomly appeared in a population to allow natural selection to work. The chance of one mutation occurring and resulting in a slightly increased curvature of the retina is one in billions. The likelihood of 1,829 similar mutations occurring in a given lineage is essentially zero, regardless of whatever population size might be imagined. Evolutionary biologists will argue that natural selection is non-random. It can therefore create anything. You can't create anything if you don't have the specific mutations to work with. The next mathematical barrier to evolution is convergence. Now this refers to the independent creation of similar endpoints through proposed evolutionary pathways. For example, the eye of a squid and a human are nearly identical. Yet this can't be attributed to a common ancestor that had a complex eye. This phenomenon is very common in nature. For example, the complex vertebrate eye is believed to have evolved between 50 and 100 independent times in different lineages. On a molecular level, the gene that creates proteins used in echolocation is composed of over 4,400 nucleotides, and these genes are nearly identical in both dolphins and bats. This cannot be attributed to evolutionary mechanisms for the same reason that it's impossible for two DNA profiles from unrelated individuals to be coincidentally identical. Again, convergence is very common in the world of biology and involves many different systems. This means that if life was created through evolution, it evolved through very constrained pathways. Therefore, the mutations that supposedly occurred couldn't have been random. The next mathematical barrier to evolution is the coevolution of complex integrated parts. All of biology is built upon layers and layers of complex integrated parts. As an example, the system of vision in vertebrates includes a focusing lens, an iris, a retina, complex fluids, optic nerve, the occipital lobe of the brain, muscles to move the eye, tear glands and ducts, a transparent cornea, it's mathematically impossible for random mutations to result in a functionally integrated system through mutations in different genes. Think about the chimpanzee at a keyboard. Random input cannot result in a functionally integrated outcome in a separate system. An insurmountable problem in evolutionary proposals is the nature of the genetic code. Traits are not created by changing single units of code. DNA is comparable to man-made computer codes and is characterized by intricate algorithms, overlapping messages, and data compression, with long strings of nucleotides directing other segments of code. You cannot gradually change the functionality of the code through random mutations for the same reason that you can't tweak a few letters in a sentence and gradually change its meaning. The 19th century idea that you can gradually change one species to the next is obviously false with the understanding of the nature of coded information. If you think mutations could create a meaningful code, you're imagining mathematical impossibilities. So to summarize, convergence proves the impossibility of evolution. Just as no two DNA samples from unrelated individuals can be identical, complex proteins can arise from unrelated lineages through mutations. Complex integrated parts, which are ubiquitous in all of biology, can arise through a random process for the same reason that a chimpanzee can never create a meaningful sentence. Specific mutations are exceedingly rare. All proposed evolutionary pathways assume that the optimal mutations will magically appear to allow natural selection to work. 
And finally, the nature of coded information precludes the incremental changing of DNA to a functional result. Many changes would need to occur, and this is just as unthinkable as supposing that a chimpanzee could generate a meaningful sentence. The mathematics I presented is not advanced, and these arguments are irrefutable. To those of you who are taking biology courses, I urge you to present these facts to your biology professors. They will not have a plausible answer. Thank you for tuning in.